What's up, everybody? Um, welcome to another episode of my hip hop review. Um, the album I'm about to do today is Karis One. I mean, excuse me, Boogie Down Productions. By any means necessary, released in 1988. This was released on Jive Records and stuff like that. The late record label that they would be um under direct label that they will be under um throughout the remainder of their career. Um Karis One produced this whole album and yeah. Singles album is known for was Stop the Violence and My Philosophy. But I believe, also I think I'm still number one is somewhat like an underground single and shit like that. A lot of people kinda say that, but you know. Alright, so I had just released I mean I mean reviewed Criminal Minded um and shit like that. And so after the release of Criminal Minded, you know, they had label issues. Scott LaRock died, and Karis wanted, you know, he kind of took that into a grain of salt. Like, he wanted to, he wanted to, you know, to be conscious of hip hop and shit like that, you know. So, with this album, you had a couple of, you know, personnel changes and shit like that, you know. His, uh, I think his stepbrother, Kenny Parker, he actually took over the DJing and shit like that. He took over the DJing. Um, he also, he also, it was introduced, um, Miss Melody came to the group and stuff like that. Um, and D-Nice, he became more of like a prominent member and shit like that, you know. He became more of a prominent member throughout the whole fucking album and shit, so. Yeah, so. Even the album cover, you know, of course, emulating the famous Malcolm X photograph and shit like that. And actually using it right. Yes, I'm talking about how Nicki Minaj jacked that photograph for that looking ass nigga single cover. Yeah, I didn't forget about that bullshit, but yeah. Alright, um, so with this album, with this album, um, this is the album cover right here. You know, this is what literally Jive gave us. But. All right. So yeah, with this album, I believe was released. I think a couple of months after Public Enemies, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back, which was another album that changed the game of conscious hip hop too. So yeah, by any, by all means necessary, ten tracks. Let's get this shit started. Track number one, uh, My Philosophy. Very, very, very dope way to begin the album. Um, very cool song. Um, one thing I love, it was just a re redefine himself, you know, spitting like calling himself the teacher. Um, I love the video too, where he said like the majority of the first verse with a cappella when he steps out the car and stuff like that. I, I always found that part to be very dope and shit, you know. Um, yeah, um, so let's see, let's see. A lot of dope lines throughout this whole song. This is my philosophy that many artists got to learn. I'm not flammable, I don't burn. So please stop burning and learn to earn respect. Cause that's just what KR collects and shit, you know. So yeah, that's very that's very dope. That's very dope and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Um So yeah, my philosophy, that's a very dope song. I love that song. Track number two, you're slipping. Um very 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 good song too it uses the iconic um deep purple song and shit like that and this song right here is basically he's just going after whack mc that's how i see it um it's so fucking ill um so fucking ill it used the same drum pattern as poetry too so i found that to be very I found that to be very um, interesting and stuff. So, yeah. Track number three, Stop the Violence. My favorite song off this album. And I, I kind of consider this song to be like one of the signature songs. Um, And it's just a clear mindset about what he was going to do with, you know, the Boogie Down Productions name from this point on and shit like that, you know. But Stop the Violence, he's talking about how, he's talking about, you know, how, you know, Stop the violence, you know, between ourselves and shit like that. And claim, you know, claim for how young black people should start having peace and understanding and whatnot. 
And he also talks about criticizing the school for showing textbooks that does not show like the whole history of, you know, the country and whatnot. And that poisoning, because, you know, because, you know, like with certain like inner city schools and shit like that, you know, they'll give like very, they won't, the textbook won't be like up to par with, you know, a lot of the textbooks, you know, as you would get from like, the suburbs and whatnot. So I kind of feel like, you know, that was very deep. That was very deep how he was he put it out there on that song and whatnot. Um also I forgot to mention too, Miss he actually married Miss Melody. That's actually his wife to say, so I forgot to mention that. Alright, so that was Stop the Violence. Very dope song. Um track number four, Illegal Business. Um that song was pretty cool. He's talking about, you know, the War on drugs, the crack ep epidemic, as you would say, you know, um, he's kind of criticizing, you know, he's kind of talking about like, the drug dealers' relationship with the police, but he's also talking about how, how can y'all get mad at the drug dealers when most of the drugs that come to the country, you know, they come from overseas, like you know, and shit like that too, which is a topic that he would, um, continue to tackle, especially. When we get into um the latter part of Boogie Down Productions too, so yeah. Um, track number five, Nervous. Um, that song was I. It was I. It was, it was somewhat. It was kind of like a party kind of track. The thing that kind of got on my nerves was the way he kept saying nervous, like. It got kind of annoying after a while and shit, so, yeah. Track number six, I'm still number one. Ah, oh, man, I'm still number one. It's an iconic hip-hop. I'm still number one. It's an iconic hip-hop song and shit like that. Um, Originally, a lot of people kind of considered that song to be, you know, a throwback. Anytime you play that song, it's like a throwback to old-school hip-hop and whatnot, but... What many people do not know was that he was actually dissing Melly Mel with this song too. Well, kind of calling out and shit, you know, to say to, to say the least. Because what I looked up, you know, Karis One and Melly Mel, Melly Mel had a battle, had a battle. I think it was at the um, what was it? What was that place? Hold on, I, I wrote it down somewhere. Give me one second. It was damn okay. I, now it's not here. Now it's not here. But yeah, they had a they had a battle and shit like that. Oh, it was Latin Quarter. Excuse me, Latin Quarter. Okay. So they had a battle, and you know Melly Mel. And uh, I think he said Melly Mel. You know, if you guys know about Melly Mel, he has like a reputation in this new school rappers a lot and stuff like that. And he, it's still going on to this day. Like you. With those shots at anybody like and stuff like that and apparently it still started as way back as way back in the 80s and shit like that so yeah so Karis one was just saying i'm still number one um some of the lines i do love was i'm not superman because anybody can or should be able to rock off turn tables grab the mic plug it in and begin but here's where the problem starts no heart because of that a lot of groups fall apart Rappers still in the art, no one's from the old school, cause rap is still a brand new tool. I say no one's from the old school, cause raps on the whole isn't even twenty years old. And that's very that's very true too, because you know, you had like a lot of cats in the older generation, like Melly Mel and whatnot, you know. Once like eighty seven and eighty eight came around, the three cats that were really Trinity was Rakim, Karis one, um, uh, Rakim, Karis, One, and Big Daddy Kane and shit like that. And if you want to add like a fourth member, you, I would say Cool G Rap. Like, because, you know, they introduced like a new style of rapping and whatnot. LL, in my opinion, he kind of represented the transitional phase from the old school to the new school of hip hop, in my opinion. That's the way I see it. And I would not put him up there with, you no. Know, the four people I mentioned, because, you know, he, I kind of see him as a class by himself. More information, just watch the reviews I've done 
from radio to Mr. Smith last year. So yeah, um, fucking um, what song? What song? I'm still number one. Very dope song. Um, one of the again one of the most signature songs here. Um, next song is Part Time Suckers. Um, that song was okay. You know, going after sucker MCs and shit. Then we get to Jimmy, the J, the I, the M, the M. Like everyone knows that song. And it's a song that Puffy jacked for his bullshit song where, you know, he changed his name for the eighth time. And, he, you know, he just wanted everyone to remember his name this time. So, but back to Boogie Down Productions, you know, this song was talking about promoting safe sex and whatnot. Um, you know, kind of kind of different, you know, from the super hoish days back in Criminal Minded and whatnot. Because, you know, the late 80s came the AIDS epidemic and shit like that. So, what he meant by Jimmy, he means wear condom shit. So, and this was like four years before TLC came out and shit like that. So, yeah, very interesting. Very interesting and whatnot. Then we have, um, what's the next song? What's the next song? Teacher, Teacher. Love this track, you know, this track, you know, is a very, again, a dance hallish track where he's just expanding that nature and whatnot. So, yeah, very interesting track. And the last track um, is called Necessary, where it's like a spoken word kind of talk where he's like speaking, speaking like a lot of dope facts about the hypocrisy that America has about hip hop at the time. Because he's saying that, you know, how can y'all blame violence and hip hop and shit like that? Well, violence has played a huge part of music over the years, even before rock and roll and whatnot, you know? And he was just talking about how the rap listeners should just grow up and stuff like that and stuff like, you know, very interesting track, very dope and whatnot. Um, and that's um, by any means necessary. Yeah, this album, I see this album as being their best album in my opinion but a lot of fans consider like their best album and shit like that um very influential like their best like criminal minds are influential this was like their best album because this is where karis one really found his style like the conscious hip-hop talking about a lot of topics that was taboo at the time when it came to hip-hop even like the drug epidemic say sex um, the misrepresentation of today's youth and education, um, very interesting album and whatnot, you know, um, in my personal opinion, conceptual wise, I would have to say, this is the second best album conceptual wise, and I'm going to explain more of that later on and stuff, so, yeah, and with this album, he was really going for that more dance hall, production and style and stuff like that and it did work out for the most part but at the same time it did have its limits and I'm going to talk more about that when I review Ghetto Music which I'm not going to review Ghetto Music right at the second because I want to actually get the album sometime later on this month as well as I meet myself trying to get the Soul on Soul Club Classics Volume 1 album and shit like that so that's going to come if anything next month and while I'm doing that, I'm definitely going to start talking about, um, I'm going to start reviewing, um, Just Ice, um, Cool and Deadly album, and the Desolate One album, which, um, Karis One both produced and shit like that, before I get into the entertainment, and again, I'm using entertainment, so what, uh, so, this is, um, Karis One's, I mean, uh, well, it's pretty much because he carried on the name, so. This is like Boogie Down Productions, um, by any means necessary, um, released in 1988. Um, yeah, this album is definitely still in print. It's definitely still in print. It was last re-released, um, I think Jazz last released in the early 20s, I believe in 2013, so. Yeah, I believe all their albums are in print, so yeah, so. Well, besides Criminal Minded. So, by any means necessary, by all means necessary, 1988 must have in your collection. 
and yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned for very dope um, reviews and shit like that. Peace.